When we first moved in here, we discovered that it was a freezing cold home. But more to the point, it was an environmental disaster. We were emitting more than twice the national average for a home simply from our living room. And that was a motivating factor for us to start making some changes. And I very much hope that you can take something away from that that you can implement on your own home. Well, this is our front door. This door has over the years had lots of different treatments, uh, different perimeter seals and different bottom treatments as well. Draft dodges, which you see on the, these doors at the moment. And we came to use also this uh, bottom treatment, which uh, in all the years that this has been installed in various places, not one failure. So I think that, uh, you know, we've hit upon a formula that's like really good. The initial draft proofing was not very uh, thorough. It did involve the doors and a little bit of other caulking um, and treating the, the light fittings was part of that. Um, but it was by no means as thorough as the draft proofing that we would do today. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, it, uh, it reduced our uh, heating bill by 50% just doing that. Well, I'm standing in our main bathroom and the purpose of that is just to tell you about a couple of things. So mostly it's about zoning. So when we heat, heat our home, it's a good idea not to heat areas that you don't really need to heat. And for us, it's the wet areas. It's the laundry, it's the toilet, it's the bathroom. Um, and so um, we treat the doors and um, keep them closed. Now, interesting thing, if you've got little kids, it's pretty hard to keep them closed. <laughs> but uh, we don't. Um, so this door has been treated with uh, an experimental perimeter seal and just a regular brush on the bottom. So when we close it, it's pretty well draft proofed and therefore we can leave the window open if we wish to ventilate the bathroom. Um, it's not going to affect the rest of the home. Another thing that's in this bathroom is that we've treated the exhaust fan with a draft stopper and we'll have a look at that when we get in the roof. As is usually the case with master bedrooms, there's often a walk-in robe, and in this case, we've got a cavity sliding door that slides into an external wall, so almost always a draft issue. So in this case, we fitted the draft dodges for cavity sliding door so that we can shut the door and have it draft proofed on this side. Well, before upgrading the ceiling insulation, we had to decide uh, how much to upgrade it and what to upgrade it with. And without knowing very much about insulation products, um, we decided to build a controlled heat chamber and we hired a cool room and made a simulated house and insulated it with all the different bulk insulations uh, and reflective insulations that we could find and basically tested uh, how they performed in heat and in cold. We went with uh, a polyester and a combination of the polyester and reflective insulation. Well, as you can see, we're in the roof now. As we mentioned, we've got polyester bats and we've got pleated foils on top. The bats are 3.5. It was the biggest bat available at the time in polyester. Now there are 4.5s. Um, and also, of course, if you want more, you can you could do like two 2.5s to make a, about a five. Um, but that's what we had at the time. And so to get more performance out of it, we put the uh, pleated foils on top and thermally, like summertime performance of this is just fantastically good. Winter's good too, but there are a couple of uh, problems with our implementation here. So one is that it makes it quite difficult to traverse um, across the roof because you have to move the foils and anytime there's maintenance here they tend not to be put back. Well, we're over the bathroom now and specifically we're looking over the exhaust fan. This is a draft stopper that's fitted over the exhaust fan. It's got two flaps like this that are pretty well 
pretty carefully weighted. And so when the exhaust fan is on, they tip up like that and the air comes out. When the exhaust fan switches off, they just fall down like that. Now you can probably hear that clickety clack that they make. This is an old model. The newer models have got little rubber bumpers on them so that they don't make that sound. So we're probably all aware that amongst the most thermally effective window coverings are heavy line drapes and box pelmets. The pelmets very important because they eliminate the airflow going down behind the drapes. Now one way to rejuvenate old drapes is to simply sew the new material onto the old. So that way you get a new look, you get added insulation, and you don't trash the old drapes and linings. Bear in mind though, you're probably gonna need a curtain maker to help you do that. Something that we've done quite recently to this home, you can see behind me in these red tiles. So these are called Quiet Space 3D tiles, and we've put them in in conjunction with a hanging feature above me that's called Horizon Circle. Why have we done this? Well, it's about sound quality in the room. As you get older, you get less tolerant of reflected sound, so sound coming at you from multiple directions, and it makes it really difficult to understand speech. So what we were finding was that we'd be sitting here watching the TV, and we'd be having this conversation over and over again. Did you hear what they said? No. Did you hear what they said? Not sure. <laughs> And so <laughs> it was very irritating and you can put the volume up uh, and make a lot more noise but it doesn't improve your understanding of speech. So the idea of this arrangement is that it absorbs sound and it eliminates some of the reflected sound so that you just hear the direct sound and I have to say it's made an astonishing difference. So we don't have those conversations anymore. If you're getting older and you're finding difficulty with understanding a dialogue, then that's a great thing. And also if you've got a home theater, I would suggest that it's a fantastic thing to use for that.